Good afternoon, Orlando. Uh, Leonard Parker here. I just wanted to send over this video audit of your website. Uh, as you can see, I'm on your website now, artofwonderlust.com. And man, very cool site. I uh, really like reading some of your content and um, some of your pictures. Uh, I was actually looking at some of your travel stories here. So right before FanCon, I had just came back to the States from Thailand. Um, so some of those pictures that you had, I was like, wow, I have these same pictures in my camera. And then uh, for Chile, I actually lived in Chile for about two and a half years, mostly in Santiago. So you definitely got some nostalgia coming back, like looking at some of those pictures uh, of uh, Santiago. But anyway, um, just heads up, this video is probably going to go a bit long. Uh, so just in case you're short on time, uh, I'll provide the key bullet points. Uh, I'll keep those to three and then I'll get into more detail later on in the video. So I would say from my review of your website, the biggest uh, thing that needs to be fixed, um, as you can see, um, I clicked through to your website from Google and it's showing me the not secure version of your website. So basically I just did a special Google search where I only looked at, look for your search results. When I click it, It's taking me to the non-SSL version of your website. So uh, I'll get into a little bit later um, why that's important, but definitely something. I do know that you have a SSL version, but you definitely want to connect those better uh, because it can cause all sorts of issues, which it is right now. Uh, the second thing I saw as a big area of improvement, um, let's see, I had it pulled up here. Okay, maybe not. Uh, so your website is not super slow. Um, I was going to average about 5.9 seconds. So ideally you want your, your load time to be at around, uh, two to three seconds. And pretty much the reason why that's important, and this is really important if you're selling any type of, uh, products is that for every additional second of load time, uh, you drop your revenue by 6%. Um, and that's, there have been studies that have shown that uh, if the longer it takes for your website to load, the lower you lower your probability of making a conversion. So I'll just run it really quickly here so you can see. And while that's running, uh, the third point I want to go over, I'm sure you're uh, well aware of this, is just to blog more frequently. Um, I think you have some really interesting topics. Uh, like I was reading the, the Art of Wanderlust, the topic you wrote on back in June. Very interesting. Um, I never knew that. So I learned something from reading your article, which is exactly what you want people to do when they come to your website, uh, among other things. So definitely try to aim for at least once per month. Um, and of course, that's uh, once per month, putting out really good original unique content. And I think you'll do very well in increasing the traffic to your website. Now, of course, the more you blog and the more you put out quality content, the more opportunities you give people to find you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You kind of want to balance quantity and quality. Now, I'm here on your, uh, so this is a free tool called gtmetrics.com. Um, and you'll see here, I just plugged in your, your website. And it says you have a load time of about 4.8 seconds. Your Y slow score is very good, but your page speed score to C could be improved. So um, I would say the biggest area of opportunity here, it looks like you have a B or A score in pretty much everything, would be to defer parsing of your JavaScript. And this is something that, you know, you could probably go into Fiverr or Upwork, find someone who could do it for 15 or 20 bucks, and then you'll have a much faster website. Uh, but you just want to make sure that you're deferring the parsing of your JavaScript. And really what this means, and this is actually, I know something dealing with Squarespace, but, you know, if I could break this down in layman terms. So at the top, above the fold before someone scrolls, you have certain elements on your page. And you wanna make sure that those elements aren't taking a long time to load because 
everything else depends on those elements loading. And so what's probably going on is that at the very top, you have something loading and then it's delaying everything else, which is ultimately slowing down the uh, load speed for your website. So you definitely want to, you know, maybe just have a developer look at that and try to clean it up. I know with Squarespace, there are some limitations on what you can optimize, but just see what they can do uh, with what the issues you have here. And you can even just plug in your tool, your website here into gtmetrics.com and then just, you know, copy and paste this and tell them, hey, can you clean this up and see what they say. Now, back to your website. So as I mentioned, you know, probably the biggest issue that I see is that um, your website isn't handling the HTTPS and the HTTP versions of your site uh the way it should. So ideally, anytime someone goes to the HTTP version of your site, they should be automatically redirected to the HTTPS version. But as you can see here, when I click through Google, it takes me to not secure. So this cause actually caused several types of issues. First is the issue of duplicate content, because basically you have at least two versions of your website out there in the interwebs and, you know, it does, it's not a really good, um, good, good thing to have because there's no duplicate content penalty, but when it's shown that you have multiple pages or that have the same content or majority of the same content, then it can hurt your rankings and push them down a bit. So that's one reason why you want to clean that up. The second reason, of course, you are selling products on your website. And even though you're sending people to Amazon, the first thing they see here when they're navigating in Google Chrome is that this, you know, this site is not secure. So it could give someone pause, you know, especially if they're not, you know, well, you know, very experienced with buying online that, hey, even though this website is taking me to Amazon, it's still showing not secure here. So is my credit card information safe? Or is my, inform you know, my other information safe? So you don't want those types of thoughts to go through your site visitor's mind. So um, yeah, just making sure that you redirect that, that would be great. And then the second reason, or I should say third reason why this is an issue, as I kind of mentioned with the duplicate uh, content piece, you have multiple versions of your website out there. So that means there are duplicate title tags, duplicate meta descriptions, duplicate um, pretty much all types of meta tags. And so you want to make sure you clean those up. Um, and really the easy way to do that, you would go through your, your domain provider, your hosting provider, and basically your .ht access file. Uh, you just want to set up a redirect from your HTTP version of your site to your HTTPS. Um, and usually when you, when you uh, talk to your hosting company, I'm not sure how who set this up, but they should have done that automatically. Uh, but just make sure that you, you get that fixed. And then once you fix that, I would recommend that you um, maybe just have Google recrawl your website to make sure that the HTTPS version is the version that's showing up in the Google search results. Um, and then lastly, you know, really the, you know, the main reason why you want to, well, I shouldn't say the main reason, but another important reason why you want to uh, take care of this urgently because uh, one of the factors in Google's ranking algorithm is this SSL certificate or your lack thereof. And so it's been shown that over 50% of websites that rank on page one in Google usually use some type of SSL certificate or HTTPS protocol. Um, so the stats show that once you have this once it's redirecting correctly, um, you have a better chance of ranking well. And you rank well, you get more website traffic, right? So we want to make sure you do that. So um, that's that was actually one of the big areas of improvement I saw. Um, of course, you know, as I mentioned, the this SSL, non-SSL version, is causing duplicate issues with your title tags, your meta descriptions, and so forth. Uh, for your title tags, I went, went through some of your pages. You want to make sure that you keep these between six, uh, 30 and 65 characters. And the title tag of this little box that popped up here. So for your travel stories page, the title tag is travel stories, the art of wanderlust. And the reason why you want to do that um, is because if it's too short, and I'll go back to Google here. Let's see. Um, actually, let me just pull the 
page. That's why it was too long. One minute. So you can see here when your title tag is too long, it cuts it off. So, you know, that's not a huge issue, but let's say it was cut off at after Cambodian. Um, you know, you want to make sure you convey what that page is about uh, completely in this title tag here, because this is almost like a mini advertisement for someone to click through to your website. And the higher your click through rate, the, 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 the better signal that sends to Google and other search engines that people like your website and are highly engaged with it. And you can see also here your meta description is cut off. So your title tag, you want to keep that between 30 and 65 characters. For your meta description, you want to keep that between 70 and 156 characters. So uh, yeah, try to always try to keep this to where you finish your statement and include some type of call to action. A simple call to action would be click here to learn more or read more or something. Um, so those are your title tags and your meta descriptions for your H1 tags. So it's kind of difficult to see this from the front end, but this is probably, this would probably be the H1 tag for this page, travel stories. Um, you want to make sure that each page has only one H1 tag. And easy way to think about this, you know, if you go back to school, maybe before you wrote a big paper, you did an outline just to better organize your thoughts. And at the top of that outline, you had like the, the working title for your page. And then under that, that title, you had key bullet points on different topics, subtopics that you wanted to cover in your writing. Well, when it comes to a website, you can think of your H1 tag as your title, and then your H2 tags and H3 tags as those supporting bullet points. And so, of course, uh, each paper, each page is going to have one title, and the same is for your website. It should only have one H1 tag. So I did see some instances where a page had more than one H1, and the reason why this is important for your SEO is that when uh, Google's robots, they're called crawlers, when they crawl your website, um, they're going to see that there are multiple H1 tags. So that's going to cause all types of, of confusion because, okay, is this page about travel stories or is it about something else? And when, whenever you cause any type of confusion, again, these are computers, um, you're going to it's going to have a negative impact on your ability to rank well in Google. So very easy to clean up, uh, but just something you want to make sure you do clean up. Um, other than that, uh, for your images, so so big thing with your images, you always want to make sure that you add an alt tag to your image. And usually in that alt tag, you want to include the keyword and then your brand name. So for a simple example, uh, you know, for this picture, your alt tag will be something like Machu Picchu and then the art of wonderless. Um, and pretty much is always going to be your target keyword for that page or a variation of that keyword plus your brand. Um, and the reason why that's important, uh, it makes your website more user friendly. So let's say, you know, two, two situations where alt tags really uh, come into play. Let's say someone's visiting your website and they're visually impaired, so they're not actually able to see the images on your site. Uh, having an alt tag there in place will tell them, give them information about what that picture is about. Uh, the same situation with people who maybe they're navigating with a very slow internet uh, connection. Uh, they, you know, the images might take a really long time to load or they might not load at all. So you wanna make sure you have that image tag there in place so that, uh, so that they know what the, the picture is about. Now, the third reason really why it's important, uh, Google, Google search uh, crawlers, they're not able to figure out what a website is about. So they can't look at this picture and tell that it's about Machu Picchu. But what uh, Altai does, it gives them that information about what that picture is about. So they, you know, they can better rank you a Google image search. And even now, uh, some images are showing up in the main Google search results as an image carousel. So you can it also positions your website to rank there as well. 
So uh, that's, you know, that's definitely something to keep in mind. And um, other than that, uh, not a ton of issues on your site. I know there aren't that many pages, but, uh, you know, definitely keep blogging, try to, you know, mix uh, quantity with quality there. Uh, you know, for your products page, I would say the only thing, maybe consider embedding some reviews here uh, or, you know, just even if possible, some testimonials, you know, maybe some testimonials about people, you know, speaking to the quality of your products or the durability, I think would really be uh, helpful for a would be buyer. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, other than the product reviews, I saw for your email list, you're only asking for email and just curious how that's uh, converting because typically I, I recommend asking for the first name and then the email. That way, any future email campaigns, you're able to use their name and make it a bit more personal. Um, and you always want to be as personal as possible when you're doing any type of email marketing. So just something else to keep in mind. And then finally, uh, well, I should say uh, next to last uh, video. So I know maybe it's too late for some of the places you've been, but you know, definitely mix pictures of video and add those to your website, add those to YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google, and it's also a Google owned property. Uh, so if you put videos there and embed them onto your website, it's definitely it will give you an SEO benefit. So uh, definitely leverage YouTube as a, as a content sharing platform for your video. And then I would say, after you've cleaned all of these things up with your website, uh, one of the things you might want to look at is just building your backlink profile. Um, there weren't there weren't that many backlinks there, and but I think for the nature of your site, uh, the the subject, um, there there should be a ton of opportunities out there for you, um, for guest posting, for you know you can use your ebook and you can you know add it to resource pages and resource guides for world travelers. Um, I, I think there, the sky's the limit there. It's just a matter of actually putting in the effort, doing the outreach to different websites within the travel niche, um, and then, you know, just building those relationships. So, Rolando, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, uh, take care. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.